that's what the Bible says, amen, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from every chain, freedom from every struggle. Come on, he deserves your praise this morning. We're thankful, Jesus, that we serve a God who reigns forevermore, amen.
lift your hands to him this morning. Lord, this morning we just want to ask that your presence flood this place. Lord, that you would show us your glory. Jesus, we know that your glory goes to the ends of the earth. Jesus, that there is nowhere we can go where we won't just be overcome by your glory. So Father, won't you have your way in this place today?
of the Lord here today. Chains have to fall. Fear has to go. Oppression, depression has to lift. Amen. Do you think we serve, don't, aren't you thankful we serve a God who's able? Come on, isn't he able? Amen. Do me a favor, before you're seated, the lights are coming up, but do me a favor. Would you tell two or three people things are changing? Come on, tell them right now, things are changing.
glad to be here today. How many are excited about Jesus? He got you up this morning. We're excited about what God is doing. Can we give a praise out to our Lord who opened up some doors for us? In case you weren't here last week, just to let you know that we have come into an agreement with the school to the purchase of the Brentmore Elementary School. Amen. And on April 2nd at 7 p.m. at our ministry activity center over on Munson, just right around the corner here, we will be having a question and answers for you that night at 7 a.m. or 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Get the early bird gets the worm, right? 7 p.m. April 2nd. Uh, any questions that you might have about the building? Some of you are like, uh, when are we moving in? I wish it was yesterday. It's a process. We just received, um, we just received actually the purchase agreement from the school this past Friday. The trustees are reviewing it right now. Our attorney will be looking at it next week uh, so that we can make sure everything's lined up. So it's just like buying a home. There's things that we have to continue to do and get approved to go through. But I can just say this, we are well on our way to a permanent place. Um, I heard this in my spirit last night and um, I just feel like the Lord said, if, if it's worth praying for, then it's worth waiting for, right? So if, if it's worth praying for, it's worth waiting for. And so maybe your prayer, prayer hasn't showed up yet. Maybe it hasn't manifested yet, but don't you give up. Don't you give in. Keep believing, keep trusting, keep declaring. And in God's season, in God's time, it will come to pass. The, the Bible says the vision is for an appointed time. God has an appointed time for it. May not be my time, but it is his time. And he's never late. He's always right on time. And so I just want you to be encouraged by that today. And um, just be encouraged and let, uh, to know that God is moving. God's taking care of some things for us. And as, uh, as soon as I have other answers for you, hopefully on that meeting, I'll be able to answer a whole lot more for you. But we are in agreement with him. That's all I can say right now. And we're moving forward into God be the glory. Amen. Uh, I think I have a video. Do we have a video? All right. Let's watch this and I'll be right back. Hey, let's let Rob and Krista know we appreciate them. On Easter Sunday, we are receiving a special offering that's going to go towards our building fund. And I think we're having a little bit of problem. Um, no, no, there it is. So we're going to have a, a special offering, renovations, everything. Architects need to get involved in all of this. But we just want to give you a little bit of a shot here and let you see where we are heading to seven and a half acres and we just think it's a really great spot that we're going to be able to minister to our community amen to serve our community amen and we want to be able to see this one day come to pass and i believe god's going to help us it has um it has a gymnasium for those of you who want to challenge me in a little one-on-one -on -one. alex that might be you Alex is here and her team, um, Cornerstone Christian, was in the state playoffs this past weekend. And they came up just a little bit short, but that's a long way to go. So Alex, congratulations to you and your team. And um, 
Alex is a freshman and started there at the end, and I went and watched the game. And two things she has going for her, for her. Um, she's not afraid to shoot. If you're going to be a shooter, you not, can't be afraid. And she has ice running through, ice water running through her veins because she ain't afraid to take that shot. But we're proud of all of our young people. We're proud of God using them and uh, using their gifts and talents for his glory. One more time, congratulations. Amen. Ushers, if you'll come, we're going to get ready to receive this morning's tithe and offering. And we want to continue to give unto the Lord. He's worthy to be given to. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. I ask you bless both gift and giver. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead, ushers. No, you're not. No, Thank you so much. Whoa, there I am. Hey. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to see everybody as always. If this is your first time at Life Point Church, we're really honored that you came to visit. We definitely want you to feel a little bit more comfortable about our church. And if you haven't had the opportunity to check in with Life Point Central on your way in, please do so. They do have some information for you. They also have a gift for you, which is always a nice thing. And then I also wanted to say hello and good morning to our uh, online family tuning in. Uh, we're so happy that you're watching us. And uh, Marisa. Yes. We have a lot coming up here. We so what's do. Going on? We are 28 days away from Easter. I want to hear it. Thank you, Matt. Matt is excited with me. We cannot wait for Easter at Life Point. It is going to be the greatest Easter. And why? Why is it going to be the greatest Easter? Because God's put that in our spirit and He's going to bless that. Do you believe that? I do. I do. Some dates for you. Our first Good Friday service, first one we've ever had, will be right here April 19th from 7 to 8. We will have children's services. It's going to be a great service. We're going to have communion together, some prayer and a healing service. Don't miss that. Easter Sunday, we'll be back in the fine arts for two services, 9.30 and 11.15. And the kids. The kids. I'm sorry. I'm just so stuck on the kids. It's just it's gonna be so, good. so fun. So, so because tell us. we're going to be in the Fine Arts Center, that means this room is open and our kids are going to take this over having their service in here. How awesome. We're praying about big things. So parents, get your kids ready. Get their friends ready. You can bring them all here. But uh, we're going to have the kids in here. It's going to be a glow-in-the-dark hey. themed service. It sounds super interesting and I can't I wait know, to see what that excited. looks like. Then the preschool is also going to have an egg hunt. And, of course, we have a nursery service six months up to the potty-trained age. So, uh, we're, we're, again, for the kids, for everything, we're believing in great things. So, uh, parents, get ready for it. Giveaways. Giveaways. Games. I'm just I'm really excited. I don't know. Anyway, there's some other exciting things to go along with Easter. If you noticed out front, we have a nice little display out there. We've got some tools we want to put into your hands. Um, we have some sign-ups for the Easter cookies. We always do a little reception every Easter and Christmas. People love that. Who doesn't like to eat, right? Oh, my god! Nobody gosh. raised their hand. Nobody That's likes thing. to I'm eat like, but yeah. me. Come on. But we need you to help us out with some cookies. You guys always do a phenomenal job at that. Also, we have some opportunities for you to serve. Maybe you are not currently on our dream team here at LifePoint, but that doesn't matter. You can still serve. There's some wonderful opportunities for you on Easter Sunday. And I'm pointing at everybody this morning. I'm sorry. I don't mean that it's a viciously. But if you would like to serve, we have some spots open so you can go sign up and we will reach out to you and let you know what's going on and then we have these lovely little invites for you i have them packaged in packs of three because we're asking every one of you to invite three people to easter sunday can you do that three people that's not much so if you want to invite six just grab two packs because you know we've got plenty but these are great tools for you to use you know wherever you go at the restaurant go up and down your neighborhood till they arrest you and tell you to quit doing that. But anyway, um, we have the names that we're going to um, send invites to if you give us their addresses. We've got the forms there. And Where can then they we, do that? Where can they They can do them? that at lbcmunner.com. I haven't said that for a while, and Josh isn't in here to harass me. But also, we have this lovely board out there that we want you to put those names on that board because we're going to be praying over those names. On Thursday, April 18th, we have the MAC open from 7 to 7. That board will be over there, and our prayer team and you will be lifting these names up for prayer. Now, Adam, I've talked a whole lot, but you need to explain to them why a personal invite is so important. So 
Show of hands here, I'm gonna let you, some of you stretch here. How many of you are in church today, maybe LifePoint or, or when you first came to church, but how many of you came to church because somebody invited you personally? That's a lot of hands. Everybody look around, that's a lot of people in this room. So Over that goes to show you the statistics are overwhelming that a majority of people are in church because somebody they know, friends, family, a coworker invited them to come into church. So we're asking that because again, this is gonna be the greatest service, not just because of the service, but because of what we're believing God to do in that service. There's people out of these walls who need to be in here. And sometimes all it takes is a friend, a friendly face, a family member, or even somebody who's dining at a restaurant to pass out and invite somebody personally. So take these cards, do what you can with them, put it on your Facebook, because there's somebody out there that you know, their lives are gonna be changed by coming to church. and. That's on you, so let's make sure that we do it for them, okay? And after service, we're still doing the video. We need more people on our video. After the service? Yes. Okay. So tell them about that. So, so based on what I just said, sorry, <laughs> I forgot that part of it. Those of you that have raised your hands, you know what a personal testimony it is that somebody invited you, and so we're now we're asking you to sort of pay it back. So right after service, Maurice and I are gonna sort of be at this door. I'm gonna be just outside in the hallway. We're just gonna record a very quick video just in the back library here. And basically you're just gonna state that you're here today because somebody invited you, right? There's people out there that may be a little bit uneasy about inviting, but when they see what the impact is on people's lives, maybe they'll be more likely to just extend that invitation. So we're just asking for about five seconds, I'm not exaggerating, about five seconds of your time. Meet me out here, we'll take you back and uh, we'll get that message out. So can I count on anybody to do that? All right, that's a lot of clapping, so I expect a lot of people out there. It's going to be great. And if, you, you know, Pastor, are you still paying people? No, Adam's in sales, no, but I... No, that was over. Um, Should have been here for a service. You how many are going to help it? us right after the service? I need five seconds of your time. You already, you're already on there. Okay, I need five seconds of your... Come on, help me out. Just, I'm here, not necessarily at Life Point Church. I came to church because someone invited me to church. Thank you. All right, give me five seconds of your time, as they said, right out here. Amen. Sometimes Amen. the violent take it by force. Say, I see okay. that. I see that. <laughs> We're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remember that next time. All You're right. Good? Everything We're else? good. Awesome. Have a good Let's service. Go. All right, guys, let them know you appreciate them so much. It's going to be the greatest Easter that Life Point has ever, ever had. You know what that means? That means people are going to be saved, people are going to be delivered, people are going to be healed. And I believe some of those people are your friends and your family, and to God be the glory for that, right? So that's what we're praying for. That's what we're believing for. And by the way, we will be five years old on Easter. Come on, five years old. And um, so that's another reason to celebrate and just believe God for great, great things. All right, Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 8. Matthew, yeah, Matthew's gospel, chapter number eight. And um, I want to look at verses five through 13, five through 13. This is what it says. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word. Just repeat that with me. Just say it again. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes this one. And, and that one come and he comes. I, I say to my servant, do this and he does it. Jesus heard this and was amazed. One translation says it staggered him. It caught him by so off guard that it just staggered him in amazement. And he said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Even the ones that were hanging out with him, even the ones that were part of the miracles that he was performing. He said, none of you guys have measured, have shown the amount of faith that this man right here has. And then jump down in the verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done 
just as you believed it would. Underline that, underscore that. Go and believe or let it be done just as you have believed. And his servant was healed at that moment. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We ask God that you would just speak through me over the next few minutes. And I pray God that you would just speak to us. Let our faith increase in this house today and we'll never cease to give you the praise nor the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Here's a principle, and it is that nothing in the kingdom moves until something is said. Nothing moves until something is said. So when someone speaks from a position of faith, it causes things to move. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we started a spiritual growth campaign and I shared with you from the story of the three kings who uh, were in need and um, the prophet Elisha said well listen what you need to do is you need to dig as many ditches as you can and as you do that I'm going to pray and God is going to fill those ditches with water and so we just talked about that and we talked about how that faith without works is dead and how that we need to act upon what we are believing God for. And then we just simply gave you this, what I call a spiritual work order. These are six things that we're asking you to do from back then until we get to Easter, digging a ditch, believing that God's going to fill that ditch and that God is going to move mightily on that day. Not that God can't move today, but that's a target. That's something that we're looking for and believing God for. So that's the work order that God gave us. And like I said, there are six things on there that we're asking you to do. I believe that when we do what we can do, God will do what only he can do. So a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, we just sit back and we wait for God to do something. And God says, well, you know, I work through vessels. I work through people. I chose not to work independent of people, but I chose to work through people. That's a covenant that God made with man at the very beginning. God could have excluded man and said, I'm going to do everything without you. But God said, I chose to work with you and I chose to work through you. And so that's just part of the covenant that we have with our amazing heavenly father. So that's why you hear scriptures like I can do right so you have to have a I can do spirit I can do and then here's the second part of that all things through Christ who strengthens me so when I do my part God does what only he can do he's the one that gives us the strength to do what we do and so today I'm just going to put another layer of preparation just a different perspective of what we can do to prepare this house for what God is getting ready to do in this house. Um, just, just as a point of reference, and you can read it later, Ezekiel chapter 37. In Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, God takes the prophet Ezekiel out and he shows him a valley, okay? Remember the three kings were in a valley. He shows them a valley. This time God doesn't tell in order to get the miracle, God doesn't say, I want you to dig ditches. God says, I want you to prophesy over this valley. I want you to speak over this valley. He said, as you begin to prophesy over the valley, this is what's going to happen. Bones are going to begin to connect with one another. He said, sinews or tendons are going to begin to be placed upon those bones. He said, skin is going to cover that skeleton. He said, then I'm going to breathe life into that skeleton, into that body, that body's going to stand up and it's going to become a great army. So that shows us that there is power when we begin to proclaim things. So when you begin to speak to things in your life, by the way, that valley was really a cemetery. He was looking over uh, uh, corpses and he, he said, I can bring life back to anything. And one of the ways that you bring life back into a situation is simply by speaking to it. 
It's simply by declaring a thing to it. And some of you need some things to come together. Start speaking to it. Some of you need some strength for some things. That's what the tendons or the tendons were. That's the muscle that comes on it. Start speaking to it. Some of you need some life in some situations. Start speaking to it. And when you start speaking, God starts moving. Because everything in the kingdom moves when you and I begin to speak. Amen? Amen. Adam's authority in the garden, if you go all the way back to the beginning, Adam's authority in the garden were his words. He had the authority to name things, and they were what he said or what he called them to be. So everything in the kingdom, just establishing this principle, everything in the kingdom of God moves when we say something. It happened in the beginning. Remember, all the way back in the beginning, God spoke, and when God spoke, things began to move. God spoke things into existence. I want you to think about this for a moment. When God was speaking, there was no one there to hear what God had to say. Because God was not speaking for communication purposes. God was speaking to create. So, so God spoke creative words. God spoke and then things started moving. Here's the neat thing about that. God said, I have made you in my image and my likeness. He created us as, as um, spirit beings. And that is, that is with the ability to speak. Really, the right translation is speaking spirits. That we are speaking beings. In other words, the DNA that we have come from God to be able to call those things that are not as though they were. That's the kind of weight, that's the kind of authority that you and I carry in the kingdom of God. John 1 and 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then down in verse 14, it says this, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so Jesus said, if you want to see things begin to move or manifest in your life, begin to speak the word of God with grace and with truth. Because the Logos, the written word, became manifested or manifested among us when Jesus came to this earth, right? That's what he was saying. And so when you speak, I'll say it this way. When you and I speak, Jesus shows up. When we speak, Jesus manifests himself. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, truly I tell you, say so he's talking to me. He said, I tell you, if anyone keeps their mouth shut. If anyone says, if anyone speaks, if anyone declares to this mountain, it shall be picked up and moved. Because when you speak, things begin to move. I thought it was interesting that he said, when you speak, that it will be cast into the sea. Why didn't it just dissolve or why didn't it just melt away? I think metaphorically there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hidden meaning behind that for us. Because, because water is symbolic of the word. Remember, we are washed by the word of God. So water is symbolic of the word. And what he says is if you want mountains to move in your life, if you want to get, a, if you want to get rid of some obstacles, some hindrances, that's what mountains are. If you want to move those things, then you'll move them with your mouth. You'll move them by the words that are coming out of or coming from your mouth. So the words that are coming out of our mouth are either going to submerge that mountain or magnify that mountain. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? We're either going to submerge it with the word or we're going to magnify it with the word. Another way of saying that is if, if, if we're going to speak life, if we're going to speak the word of God, the word of God trumps whatever we're facing. Right? But if we're going to speak negativity, doubt, unbelief, that mountain is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And Jesus said, if you want to get rid of it, you have to speak to it. Just look at your neighbor and tell him, say something. We all know 
that there's power in our words. Whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never, will never hurt me, lied. <laughs> words hurt. You, I, we've all been hurt by words. Um, they affect us. Words carry life or death, blessings or curses. Words carry weight. And we all know that if we hear something long enough, if we hear negative things uh, all the time, that's going to affect our faith. Sidebar, um, without getting too political, if we keep hearing negative, negative, negative things, hello, yeah. Yeah. It, it will get into your spirit and it will cause you to think something of someone that's not really true. Hello. So sometimes we just need to turn the negativity off and tune in to what is positive and what is uplifting and what is encouraging and what is exhorting rather, rather than listening to all these negative things. Because if the truth can set you free, then a lie can keep you bound. Right? That's a good place to give God praise. So... The older that you get, um, this is why that it's not so much what they said about you, but rather what you say about yourself. And some of us simply need to just get in front of a mirror and start speaking to ourselves. And we just need to reverse the curses that have been spoken over our lives. Because if all you've heard is you're, no, you're no, no good, you'll never amount to anything, you're worthless, you're useless. If that's all you hear, you're going to carry that toxin, that poison in your spirit. And some of you heard that growing up. But how many of you know it doesn't matter what they say, it's what he says. And if you can line up with what he says, you can become and do what he says you can do. So get in front of that mirror and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God. Get in front of that mirror and say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Get in front of that mirror and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, I'm saying, quit listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. Start talking to yourself. Dr. James Gill is the only man on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. And so you do a triathlon and then 24 hours later, you do it again. Huh. The last time that he competed and finished, he was 59 years old. Look at your neighbor and say, no excuses. <laughs> 59 years old. They asked him, how did you do this? Well, obviously training, those types of things. But how many of you know there's a mental aspect that goes with it as well? There's a mental part of it. I mean, I mean, you can have two equal people as far as physically able to do certain things. And what will separate one from the other is their mental capacity. Is what they believe. And he said, it's very simple. He said, I learned to speak to myself rather than listening to myself. He said, when I listen to myself, he said, I hear all the negative things. When I listen to myself, I hear all the reasons why I can't. And so he said, I stopped listening to myself. I stopped talking myself out of things that, that God said I could do. And then he said, I would encourage myself. How many of you know there are times the praise band's not going to be there for you? There are times your favorite YouTube preacher's not going to be there for you. Or your pastor. There are times like David 
when everything's coming against you and you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. This is a principle that we need to learn because there are times that we walk through things, valleys and dry seasons of our life where the exact opposite is happening of what we are believing God for. This is when you have to encourage yourself. This is when you have to push past the limits. This is where you have to get past your mind until your mind line up with what God says about you and what God says you can do. And he said, I would simply encourage myself. I would quote scriptures. I would start speaking over my life. He said, that's how I was able to finish these races. I want somebody to know you can finish what you start if you'll just encourage yourself along the way. Come on, put your hands together if you believe it true today so talking to myself well here's a woman the bible said who was sick for 12 straight years she had an issue of blood couldn't stop bleeding but the bible said she heard that jesus was passing by faith comes by and hearing by the word of god but how many of you know it takes more than just hearing faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god she heard jesus was passing by but then she began to say within herself, Self, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And the Bible said that she reached out by faith and touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole. Why? Because things move when you begin to speak. Things in the kingdom start happening when you begin to speak. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say I am. Let the poor say I am rich. Why? Because things begin to move when we begin to speak. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 2. Let me give you this right here. Let's look at this. Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Curian, uh, Curinus, the Q, was governor of Syria. <laughs> Works for me. Everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up of the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Verse 6, while they were there, everyone say there, Amen. the time came that the baby, for the baby to be born. Now listen to this. Here's a man, Caesar, who understands the power of a spoken word. He understands the power of decree. He sent out a decree. He spoke that every person should be under his authority was to be taxed. When he sent that decree out, everyone underneath his authority had to move. Everyone. Everyone in his world had to go to their own home to be taxed. No matter their position, no matter their condition, once that decree was issued, they had to move based upon the decree of one man. Why? Why is that? Because he has the power and the authority to say it and do it. Now, notice what happened here. When he sent out this decree, this uh, decree, notice what happened. Not only did people move, but so did their money. He sends out this decree. He's moving people because when you speak, things move. But not only did they move, he also moved their money. All from this one decree. Now here's the hidden message in this story. This is where you have to dig a little bit deeper to find out why the tax was even sent out to begin with. It wasn't because they needed more money. The reason that the tax went out was because one woman was out of place. Sorry, ladies, I just got to talk about it for a minute. One lady was not in the right position to receive the promise. 
because here's Mary and Joseph in Nazareth. But according to Micah 5 and 2, that's the prophecy about Jesus being born, that he would be born where? In Bethlehem. But Mary and Joseph are here. And nothing is moving Mary and Joseph until this man sends out a decree. And when this man sends out a decree, everyone underneath his authority has to move. So Joseph and Mary, in spite of her condition, have to move from Nazareth and go all the way over to Bethlehem in order to pay taxes. The hidden meaning or the hidden story is this. Mary was not in her rightful place to give birth to the promise of God. And so there are times in our life, because we are not in the rightful place to receive the promise that God has for us, God will send a word that will cause us to move, to get us to the place that he's called us to be, so that we are in the right place at the right time, so when, God's work, when God shows up, we can give birth to the promise that he has for our lives. That's why you have to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us. And so many times a word is given in order to move us, in order to push us along so that we can give birth to what God has promised in our lives, right? How many of you need a word? Amen. I need a word. How many of you need a word? Amen. Now notice, when that word was issued, um, what happens is this, people come into your life and people leave your life. Money comes into your life, resources, finances find their way to you. Could it be, I'm just throwing it out here, could it be that God has given us a word, six things to do? Could it be that this is the word that God is giving us that's going to move us from here to move us over here to where we can receive the promise that God has for us as a church so that we can give birth to what God has called this church to give birth to. I'll explain that in a minute. So you can't and I can't look at this as something that's optional. This is not optional. If we really want to line up with what God is doing, because as your pastor, I believe I've heard from God. And I believe this is what God is telling us to do. And I believe if we line up with that word, that God will do what only he can do. I believe that people will start coming into our life that need to be here. And those who maybe not need to be here may have to exit. But I will tell you this, God will bring it to pass. Oh, help me right here. Okay, okay. Um, did some people show up in Mary and Joseph's life? Yes. Yeah? Did they come empty-handed? No. Uh-uh. They didn't come empty-handed. They came with gold, myrrh, and frankincense. What's a baby going to do with gold? I know what mom and daddy's going to do with gold. But what's a baby? And many people think and believe, scholars believe that this was some of the money that was given to finance. Finance the kingdom, to finance what God was going to do. And I'm just simply believing that God is taking us on a journey that began five years ago, and I'm prophesying to us right now, that God began a journey five years ago, and when we get in the right place at the right time, the right people are going to show up with the resources in order to further the kingdom and in order to further the vision that God has given us. I'm just trying to move some people and move some money into this place so that we can carry out the will of God. Come on, if you believe it, put those hands together and give him praise. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. One of the reasons I shared this particular story with you is because it shows us the power, the power of a decree, but it also shows us the culture in which the centurion was raised in. He was raised in a time and in a culture where he understood the power of a decree. But he also has a military background because as a centurion, he was responsible for people and he was responsible for certain things. So he had the authority that he needed to operate in his position. But he has a problem. Touch your neighbor and say, he has a, tell him he has a problem. 
The problem is this. He has something in his house that's supposed to be moving and helping and strengthening. But the Bible says that his servant is paralyzed. So he has something that's supposed to move, something that's supposed to help, but it's paralyzed. And so he needs help with this. This is what he says. Jesus says, do you want me to come to your house? He said, you don't need to do that. He says, as a matter of fact, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. This is what he told Jesus. He said, Jesus, one translation puts it this way. He said, Jesus, all you have to do is stand right where you are at and say it. And, where you, and if you stand where you're at and say it, it'll happen over here. Sometimes you can't get to the place where you can put your hands on it. You want to. You want to be able to get in there and help them. I want to help you. I want to be able to reach out and touch you, but I can't get to you. And sometimes they won't let you get to them. But let me tell you what can get to them. You can stand right where you are in faith, believing. And if you can't put your hands on them, you can put his word on them. And when you put his word on them, things will begin to change. He put his word on his servant. And when his word hit that servant, that paralyzed man got up and began to walk. I just stopped by to tell somebody, if you'll stand up and decree something and believe that God is able to do it, if you'll speak to it right where you are, I believe God is going to move in that place. And whatever is paralyzed, whatever's not moving, whatever's not doing what it's supposed to do, it's going to change in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout yes in this house. He says, listen, I'm a man under authority, and I know what that means. When somebody says, I need you to go here, he said, I know they're not suggesting for me to go there. All my military people wave at me. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. And he says, so when someone gives me a command, I know I need to go. He said, I also understand that I have an authority that I operate under or over as well. And when I tell someone to go, they go. When they come, or if I tell them to come, they come. Because things move, church, when we begin to speak. And here's what I want you to see. I want you to know that what happens in this place can affect what's going on out there. What happens in this house can affect what's going on in your house. You may be praising God right here, but that praise is leaving this room. Do you know the words that you speak, they never end? They're out there in the atmosphere. Do you realize the sound of it is in the atmosphere? It never dies. It's out there. Everything we've ever said is hanging in the atmosphere. That's alarming in and of itself. But if you'll stand in this house or wherever and you begin to decree and declare what you are believing God for, I'm telling you, sooner or later, it's going to manifest in that place. I believe that with all of my heart. As a matter of fact, next week, next week I'm going to share with you the power of petition. It's a form of prayer. The power of petition. And I'm going to show you how to get your promise. The power of petition. And sometimes, you know, there are different levels of prayer. One of the levels is the power of petition. And I can't give it all to you because I need you to come back next week. But I'm telling you, I can, I can show you how to get, by God's word, how to get his promise to manifest in your life. Come on, somebody, if you believe it. <laughs> Write this scripture down and hang on to it. Job 22 and 28 says this. It says, you shall declare a thing, and it shall be. That's not it. I'm not there yet. I'm not in Acts yet. Job 22, 28, it's, I didn't give it to him, it says this, you shall declare, decree, speak, and it shall be 
established. Why? Because everything moves in the kingdom when we speak. All right, I'm going to close with this. First closing. For, uh, Peter is in prison. His partner in ministry, James, was just executed. They're getting ready to execute Peter, but because it was a holiday, it was Passover, Easter, they couldn't do it. So they were waiting. And the very next day, Peter was going to be executed. Now listen to this. While he's in prison, the Bible says that there were two guards that were chained to him. So he's in a cell, and he's got two guards chained to him. Outside of that cell, there are two more guards. All right? Because, <laughs> you know, you try to lock them up, and you turn around, and they're gone. Because of the power of God. Outside of those two guards, in the prison, outside of the prison out in front of the gate are two more guards. They are assigned to keep an eye on Peter. All right? So Peter's here. Let's just say he's here. Peter's in this place. Across town, the church has gathered to pray. They're in a house and they're praying. They can't get their hands on Peter. He's being guarded. They can't get to him. When you can't get to them, when you can't put your hands on them, you can put your word on them. Because they're here praying. And as they're praying, Peter's a bad man, and I mean it in a good way. He's going to be killed in the morning. He just witnessed the death of his friend. Guards are chained to him. He's sleeping. I mean, is that kind of like for anybody besides me? He's sleeping the night before he's going to be put to death. He's sound asleep. He's so sound asleep that an angel shows up in the prison cell. The light from the angel is radiant. He's still asleep. The angel has to kind of smack him to wake him up. You know, like some of you had to do to get people up this morning. <laughs> had to smack him. It reminded me of Morgan when she was a kid. You could not wake that kid up for anything. So one day she told me, she said, Dad, here's what you need to do. Sidebar, I'm sorry. Still in the middle of the first closing. She said, Dad, just get some pots and pans and come into my room in the morning and start banging them all together. So guess what I did? I got some pots and pans, went into her bedroom that morning and started just putting, is she in this room right now? <laughs> oh, that's good. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> Sound sleeper. So the angel gets him up, says, get dressed, get your sandals on your feet, let's go. Gets him through the two guards, through the other two guards, through the other two guards, opens the gate, gets him out into the city, into the street, and this is where we're at. When this had dawned on him, in other words, he thought he was dreaming, and he's out now in the middle of the street, free. He went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were what? Praying. They were praying. Go ahead. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I was Peter, I'd be yelling, let me in. <laughs> Do you realize where I just came from? Let me in. So she goes. Go ahead and back up. I want to say something here. I just want to tell somebody. Uh, 
where to go? Some of the things you've been praying for are getting ready to show up at your door. Amen. Amen. Getting... Surprise, surprise, surprise. Some of the things you've been believing God for are getting ready to show up at your door. What is a door? A door is simply a place of transition where you go from one room to the next. And some of you are about to step out of one thing and into something that God has promised you in your life. Hello. Just look at your neighbor and tell them it's at the door. It's at the door. It's at the door. It's at the door. Second closing. Next verse. This is what they told Rona. So typical of the church. We're praying for people to be delivered and set free. They've been praying for Peter all night. Hey, guess what? What we've been praying for is at the door. Shut up. You're crazy. <laughs> you're out of your mind. Church, did we not just read that they were praying for Peter? Yes. And when their answer shows up, look at the response. Isn't that like us? I mean, come on. Church. Isn't that like us? Oh, God, you know, do we really believe what we're asking God for? Do we, uh, the prayers that we're praying, do we really believe God can do it? I would say yes, we do. And yes, he can. They say, you're out of your mind. Look at your neighbor and tell them Rhoda ain't wrong. <laughs> Rhoda ain't wrong. She just kept insisting, it's here, 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 it's here. He's here, he's here, he's here. He's here, he's here, he's here. Second response, must be an angel. Can't be what we're praying for. But Peter, you see, this is how gracious God is to us. The answer's going to keep on knocking until you open the door. God says, let me help your faith. I'm going to keep knocking until you open the door. And they open the door and saw him and were astonished. Wow. Now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask you to stand but not leave. Our team is coming out, so I want you to stand. Don't leave. I couldn't help but to think that maybe, just maybe, some of our loved ones, some of our friends are imprisoned. Maybe, maybe not physically, but spiritually or maybe mentally. And they're bound, they're paralyzed. They're paralyzed by fear. They're paralyzed and bound by the pain of their past. They're paralyzed and they're bound by a wound or a hurt. You know, maybe some of the people that you've been thinking about inviting to Easter, maybe, maybe the reason that they haven't been in church for a long time is because they were hurt in church. And they don't want anything to do with that ever again. But I'm telling you that if you'll send a word, if you'll pray by faith and believe God, I'm telling you, God is about to loose some things. God's about to break some chains off of people. God's about to open up some prison doors. Go ahead and begin to play. play. God's about to open up some prison doors. God's about to move. Don't you waver. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not just saying this. I'm saying this by the unction of the Holy Spirit. There are people under the sound of my voice that you've done everything in your power. You, you've tried to help. You've done everything that you know to do. And nothing has moved. Nothing has changed. You just entered into a season where God is telling us that you'll stand in one place and you'll decrease something and something is going to happen in another place.
You have to believe that today. So I don't know who it is. I don't know what it is. But I do know how you can get movement. I'm giving you five declarations to begin to declare. They were in your bulletin when you received it. We'll have them on the website later. We'll have them on our Facebook later. But these are five decrees that I want you to decree from here forward. How many have something in your life you need to, it needs to be moved? Come on, how many, uh, you need to see movement. Maybe it's a loved one, maybe it's finances. I don't care what it is, you need to see movement. These are five declarations that I want you to make. Number one, everything in my life is finding its appointed place. Don't say it with timidity, say it with boldness and faith. Everything in my life is finding its appointed place. Joseph and Mary, everything in my life is finding its appointed place. And when I get to that appointed place, the promises of God are going to begin to be birthed and God's going to be sending people into my life and the resources that I need to make it happen. Number two, everything under my roof is moving towards blessing. How many of you believe that? I, I, let me back up. Let me back up. Are you ready? Let's read it together. Number two, ready? Everything under my roof is moving towards blessings. Everything. Number three, let's read it together. Everything I need is moving in my direction. Number four, everything that needs to go is going and everything that needs to come is coming. I tell one to go and he goes. I tell one to come and it comes. Number five, every paralyzed thing in my life is being healed. If you believe God's doing it, put those hands together and give them praise. Tracy, this is what I believe. It's just like that scripture when Peter showed up at the door and they were astonished, they were amazed. I'm just going to go out here and let you know that there's people that are getting ready to show up at the doors of Life Point Church that are going to astonish you. I said they're going to astonish you. You're going to be amazed by who shows up in this. That person you said, they'll never come to church. watch God. That person, that person that you've been backing off and saying, I'm not going to invite them, they're too mean. That's what they thought about Saul, who later became Paul, who was persecuting the church, locking Christians up, having them, having them murdered. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. And God says, I'll get him. I'll get him. God knocked him off his high horse. God, God turned him around and used him for his glory. So no one's too far away from God to reach. Come on, no one's too far away from God to reach. I just feel in my spirit, Linda, that we need to push on this today. I feel in my spirit that we need to push on this today. I don't want this to be something that's just a cute sermon. I don't want us to just leave this place and say, oh, that, that was a good message. I want, us to, I want us to take this with us. And I don't care where you are, what you're doing. If you have to, we'll leave it up. You can take a picture of these five things. Like I said, it's, it should be in your bulletin that you receive. But I want us all saying the same thing, the same decrees, and believing God's going to do it. Amen? Come on, let's believe God for the greatest, greatest Easter that we've ever seen at Life Point Church. As a matter of fact, Father, right now, we pray for those that are bound. We pray for those that are paralyzed by fear and addiction, and those that are paralyzed by hurt, and those that are paralyzed by unbelief. We begin to pray for them right now. And what's ever holding them, what's ever binding them, whatever chains are attached to them, we command those chains to fall right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, if you have to send angels uh, to set them free, then send angels uh, to encamp about them. Father, move people out of their life that needs to be moved out of their life and move the
the right people in their lives that need to be moved into their life. Father, we decree and we declare that everything that's been paralyzed is becoming healed and will begin to move the way it's supposed to move in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Lord, we believe that blessings is coming to this house like never before and finances are going to show up in this house like never before and we are going to continue to give birth to the promise and the blessing of God. And all of us said yes and amen. Put those hands together one more time. Can we leave by worshiping him? If you have a need, if you want someone to agree with you in prayer, if you want to make this proclamation and have someone agree with you in prayer, if you need something to move in your life right now, we want you to make your way to this altar. Let's just begin to worship the Lord as we are dismissed this morning. God bless you. I'll see you next week right here at the point as we talk about the power of a petition. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you.